She supported this love. She helped to find books about animals because she thought, well, then Jane will learn to read more quickly, which I'm sure was true. And <clears throat> when I was growing up, World War II was raging, and you, you couldn't buy new books. And anyway, we had very little money. My father had joined up. So I was outside. I was out in our big garden. I was out on the cliffs in Bournemouth looking for birds and squirrels and watching the spiders, anything I could find. So <clears throat> instead of looking at television, I was out actually watching nature, and I think that's really important. I was 10 years old when I found a little book in a second-hand bookstore, and I just had enough money to buy it, and it was called Tarzan of the Apes. And I took it home. I took it up my favorite tree in the garden, which is still there now, only much bigger, and read it from cover to cover. Fell in love with this glorious lord of the jungle and was very jealous because he married the wrong Jane. And that's when I said, OK, I'm going to grow up, go to Africa, live with wild animals, and write books about them, any animal, as long as I was out in the forest. Everybody laughed at me. How will you do that? You don't have money. There's a war going on. Africa's far away and probably filled with danger. And anyway, you're just a girl. Not my mother. She said, if you really want to do something like this, you're going to have to work really hard, take advantage of every opportunity. And then, if you don't give up, maybe you find a way. And so, saving up money. Um, eventually, I got out to Africa. The opportunity was being invited by a school friend whose parents had moved to Kenya. So that's how I got to Africa for the first time in 1957. I suppose the main message I got from my mother in the early days when I was really afraid that I wouldn't get the, uh, get the trust of the chimpanzees in time, was terrified of letting Louis Leakey down. And her letters were all full of support that, you know, you can do it. But the main thing about my mother was that for the first four months I was at Gombe, she was with me. So not only having supported me as a child, but when the, the British authorities in what was then Tanganyika, part of the crumbling British Empire, uh, the, these authorities refused to let this young girl into the forest alone. Unheard of. Ridiculous. But Leakey never gave up, and in the end they said, well, she can come, but only if she has a female companion. So mum volunteered to come. And she played a huge part in those early days. She boosted my morale when the chimps were running away. She pointed out what I was learning from my peak through my binoculars. And she also started a clinic for the local people. She wasn't a doctor, she wasn't a nurse, but her brother was a surgeon and she had some very simple things he'd given her, aspirins and, you know, elastoplast and bandages and Epsom salts that people don't know about now and saline drips that people have forgotten. And she made some amazing cures. And so she helped me start a really good relationship with the local people right from the start. And that was just an amazing contribution that she made to the long-term research. So she was a support all my life. She supported me during many difficult times. And I still remember her, even now. <laughs>